faith stories. My now wife Chelsea was like, uh, "Hey, you're coming to church with me on Sunday," and I was like, "All right, I've you know I've been looking at the Bible, you know, let's let's do this." Fish and memories. When I first started, I was just fish, fish, focus on the fish, focus on the fish. And I see the kid catch a fish. I'm like, good job. Perfect. Awesome. And then he goes up there and I'm like, we're catching slot snook. And this kid's up here going, oh, the breeze. I'm like, I like that. Th- this is exactly what it's about. Meaningful conversations. You have to stay in the word. You have to have a good support system. You have to know what the end goal is. You have to know who God is. Positivity. This is the Faith and Fishing Podcast. Your host, Cam Steele. If your identity is you're an angler, um, whenever you're not doing well on the water, that's whenever you can't be content. And Robert Randolph. And his timing is perfect. We might not always agree with it, uh, and we might not always understand it at the moment. Bring you interviews with some amazing guests from the fishing community and discuss all things to do with fishing and their faith. Welcome to the fan. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Faith and Fishing Podcast. I'm Cam. Hey, and I'm Robert. And uh, we are we're coming off two really good episodes, going into another awesome episode for y'all, um, especially y'all uh, fellow podcast junkies out there. So. Uh, we will uh, jump into that in just a second. But first, Robert, how are you doing, man? Man, I'm doing good. Um, in 2024, is shaping up to be a, a you know a good season of shows, and I know that uh, you're going to have some life things going on <laughs> later on in the year. So I just I don't know what I'm going to do uh, to try to follow up. The, you know, this first the first uh, little bit of shows that we have. So it kind of got me a little nervous. <laughs> oh man, you will do great. I know you will have all the faith in the world and your ability. Um, I will say last episode with Ben Ricks, um, I mentioned the new Carolina waters hoodie. And if you're on YouTube, this thing is not only does it look awesome, but man, is it comfortable and that awesome performance material. So, um, Definitely go go check that out. CarolinaWatersNC.com. Use code STEEL15 get you a little bit off of that. Um, but yeah, and uh, speaking of you know discount codes, uh, we are we're blessed to have relationships with some really awesome uh, companies. And if you are someone who like, I'm going to use that promo code. I'm I'm interested in that stuff. And then by the end of the episode, you completely forget. Um, kind of like I do. Um, then, uh, head on over to our YouTube channel and just watch our end credits because we have all of that information scrolling, uh, you, all the websites, all the promo codes, all of the, the company names, all that good stuff. So, um, go check that out. Um, yeah, that's one thing that I'm, I'm always, usually if I'm listening to a podcast, I'm driving or I'm, I'm working uh <laughs> yeah the yeah. air quotes for everybody that's listening and not watching but and, and then by the time you know if i'm driving or whatever i never i'm like oh man and then you know you go you know a week down the road and i go to order something and i'm like i know uh, i know alex rudd has a has a promo code for this and then i go try to find it and it, I never can find it, but I know the people that have the codes because I listen to the podcast, but I never can find it. And when I saw those roll on the credits, I was like, oh, man, we need to make sure everybody knows that all of the discount codes are at the end rolling on the credits. So uh, hopefully that'll help some some people out, save some save some bucks. Absolutely. And if you are someone who are you just want to know how to support the podcast, that is probably the best way to support us is using the the promo codes that we give you because that tells our sponsors that that our listeners are um you know they 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 are getting uh a return on their investment from us so um that uh that's a great way to help out the podcast um robert did you uh <laughs> this is a silly question. Did you get any fish <laughs> this last episode? Nah, that, no fishing. That's everything is uh, super cold. 
um, this week. And uh, it's windy, cold. Uh, I think a couple of days it's not going to get above freezing. So the lowest temperatures we've had in North Carolina in a couple of years probably. Uh, there's no there's no snow or ice uh, as there is in Tennessee. A lot of Tennessee guys get pretty good uh, snow coverage. But there's no snow here, but it's uh, – Really cold, so I didn't get to do any fishing. I did uh, go to the Raleigh uh, uh, Fishing Expo and, and walked around and saw a couple people and, uh, you know, uh, rubbed some elbows, uh, shook some hands, and uh, it was it was pretty good, pretty good show. So I stopped by the cashing booth and the one cash booth and uh, talked to those guys and then uh, saw our guest uh, from last week and uh, – uh, Better fishing with two bald biologists, so stop by and talk to those guys for a while. Uh, I didn't see the Carolina Waters booth, and I had it in my head to stop, and then uh, kind of was running short on time and had somewhere to be, and I never, never. I guess their booth was maybe around the, some corner. I didn't go. I thought I went around everywhere, and then when I left, I was like, "Oh, dang, gone!" Uh, I didn't stop by and see those guys, but uh, the hoodie looks nice. So uh, that was it turned out to be a good show, and from what I heard. Um, all of the vendors were super happy uh, about the turnout. The numbers were up, and uh, there was one guy that had kayaks, and he said he sold all of his higher-end kayaks on Friday. He was like, man, the first four or five hours, they wiped me out. Uh, so that's just, uh, you, you know, he had some left, but not not a lot, and they were all uh, – they were all the paddle type kayaks that you would be interested in, and it, all the pe- <laughs> all the pedal kayaks sold on Friday. He said. Well, speaking of, um, I do have some news in that uh, in, in that front. So I am now uh, the proud owner of a feel free Mokin twelve point five version two um, that I am just itching to get out and and get the feel of and start modding out and. I, I've got some some sonar pod plans and a bunch of a uh, bunch of stuff that I'm excited to do on that. But just wanted that uh, to be able to you know stand up. Hopefully by the end of the year I'm standing up and fishing, um, and uh, you know if nothing else, it's a good uh, good opportunity for some uh, some content for the clumsy kayak angler. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm excited about that. Um, and just wanted something I can sit up higher, get a better vantage point, easier to, to get in and out of and something that it's got a bunch of features that I I've been missing for a while on on my, uh, perception. And, um, I, I still love the perception boat. It paddles great. Um, but there were just a few things about the Moken that is like, I've been wanting that for a while and I got a really good deal on one and um, excited to get out on that. But yeah, that's awesome. I, I saw a picture of it and it looks, it looks nice. So I'm, I'm excited for you. Absolutely. Well, um, well let's uh, let's go ahead and we are going to, to thank a sponsor and then uh, we are going to get this week's guest introduced. Get Outdoors Pedal and Paddle is one of the largest canoe, kayak, and cycling retailers in the southeast, with a huge selection of kayaks, canoes, bikes, and all the accessories needed to experience paddling and cycling comfortably and safely. Get Outdoors helps to expand and educate the paddling community through their free demos held on local lakes in the Greensboro, North Carolina area, and through in-store clinics and on the water courses and demos, and will even get your new boat rigged up for kayak fishing for you. Stop by the shop in Greensboro, North Carolina, or visit them online at shopgetoutdoors.com to be wowed by their selection. Perfect time. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. The uh, the charger for the laptop had come unplugged from the brick, so I uh, had to... That's why you need one of these. Absolutely. See that? That there you go. Nakwa, Nakwa power bank. Yep. You can just p- take it anywhere, plug anything in. All those connections on there. Look at all those connections. All different connections. All right in one little nice, neat package right there. Absolutely. 
That's what I'm talking about. All right. So if you've listened to, you know, three episodes of this show, you know that Robert and I are podcast junkies. If you love Faith and Fishing Podcast, um, this next guest, his podcast is going to be for you. Um, the uh, the Phil Quiver Outdoors podcast is, um, I mean, it's got a lot of similarities to Faith and Fishing in terms of its its outdoors and faith based, but it's it's not just fishing; it's outdoors altogether. So um, I am excited to uh, to get this guest in here. Um, he's had he's had some phenomenal guests already, so I'm excited to see where he takes it from here. And uh, he's got a little bit of, of luck on his side, too, because he was our winner for the uh, um, the Faith and Fishing Christmas giveaway last year. But um, Jody Thibodeau, welcome to the show, brother. Hey, thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So go ahead and introduce yourself to our listeners and tell us who Jody Thibodeau is. All right. Well, uh, I am uh, first and foremost uh, a follower of Christ. Uh, that's, that's the most important thing, uh, the end all be all. But outside of that, uh, I, I drive a concrete mixer for my day job. That pays the bills. But uh, I've also recently uh, started up Field Quiver Outdoors, which uh, we, we can talk a little bit more about the backstory with that in, in a little while. But uh, it originally it was intended to be just a business, like a side hustle. Um, but I really felt led to do uh, more of a ministry with it as well or have a ministry aspect uh, to, to witness to the lost. And that's where the podcast podcast comes into play. And uh, I, I did it backwards of probably what most folks do with their businesses. I did the podcast first before I started the actual uh, selling merchandise and products. But uh, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, I, I just thoroughly enjoy being outdoors. I don't get a whole lot of time to do that with five young kids, but. Uh, that that's also where uh the backstory with field quiver outdoors comes in as well is i didn't grow up in an outdoors household uh with sportsmen um pretty much for me uh growing up if we went fishing it was to the local pay pond uh for catfish or every once in a while we'd go to the lake and and catch bluegill uh, but actually had never caught a large mouth until two years ago and uh so my kids all all the boys and even the girls now as they're getting a little bit older uh, are showing interest in outdoors activities. So again, I've always had the interest. I've just never actually participated in it that much. So uh, effectively what the podcast is and the YouTube channel is, is me finding out for myself how to do all these different things that my kids want to learn so I can turn around and teach them so that other folks that might be in my shoes but just aren't comfortable asking the questions or don't enjoy doing the research like I do, they have a source to go to to get the bare bones basics and figure out where to go next. Absolutely. So you said you kind of did it backwards, um, but let's uh, let's kind of start from the, the origin of Field Quiver Outdoors and, uh, you know, you just kind of – hit on it there um I, i'm curious you know as someone who who went through the journey also from the time that you decided i am going to do this to the time that the first episode dropped what was that how long was that process and and what did you go through for that process just so maybe we've got a listener who's like i've got a podcast idea and i want to know um uh how long like what it's going to take and everything like that. Like for you, your journey in this content creation world, what did it look like for you? Well, for me, it, it started out with um, coming up with the idea for the field quiver outdoors. Um, and like I said, originally it was just going to be a little side business uh, focused on outdoor uh, themed, like novelty type items, specifically stickers uh, that are, a lot of it is probably uh, even even going forward going to be parodies of uh, pop culture outdoor stuff. Um, like right now, I have uh, just a few decals uh, or the main uh, items, but uh, like Swoley Bear, 
uh, is is a play on Smokey Bear, but he's ripped because he works out. Um, because I've always, uh, or really since college, had an interest in working out, lifting weights, and so I just figured I'd meld the two. Um, but it was actually not even going to have anything to do with the outdoors. Uh, it was actually I'm a big history nerd too, and I've always had an inter- interest in the American Revolution. And originally because there's a lot of these t-shirt companies out there that make the designs that are patriotic revolutionary war themed, but they also have a lot of stuff that it's like, I don't really want to wear something that has that on it. Um, support that because I don't want to own anything that I don't feel comfortable wearing to church or having on if Jesus were to come back when I'm wearing it. Um, so originally I was going to do designs revolutionary war themed, but Uh, I really felt led to do a ministry aspect and then I felt God kind of pushing me more towards outdoor because that's more what the kids were in. And so that was the focus on that. When I decided to do it outdoor themed, uh, that was the point that I really started looking at the podcast because I knew that was probably going to be the way that I would do the outreach aspect. And I started looking into it, um, I'm one of those folks, my wife gives me a hard time because it, if I'm going to do something or if I'm going to buy something, I will research it to death, bring it back to life, research it to death again, and then I might finally pull the trigger on it. Um, but my big thing was finding a web host, finding uh, what platform I was going to use to record and release uh, the episodes through. Um And then uh, mainly just equipment. But it probably took me, because I was trying to do it in stages and budget it out financially. Um, So initially, uh, I purchased uh, uh, what I needed as far as website and basic equipment with a couple of mics and a mixer. Um, And then I uh, I'm fortunate enough that I have a good friend that had a whole bunch of sound equipment that was his father's brand new in the boxes he said just go through it see what you need get what you need what you think you'll use just have it so I I was very blessed and fortunate in that regard Um, and uh, pretty much I just kind of jumped into it last spring was actually when it was supposed to start uh, coming out with episodes with regularity and I think it I did one and then there was a uh, probably about a three or four week gap, then another one. And uh, then it, it went a period of time uh, where I was having issues getting guests on and getting content between uh, work and family and church obligations. So I decided just to put it off until I could kind of get a little bit of a catalog going where they would be coming out at least every other week. And then in the fall, uh, about October, uh, was when I actually started releasing uh, content. So uh, from idea to somewhat regular release of content was a good year, year and a half. Uh, So, And keep in mind, you know, y'all that are listening, you know, he said he's someone who researches the absolute snot out of stuff. I was not. Um, I mean, for the most part, like I was comfortable with a lot of this stuff because my background, you know, I, I did, uh, live music and live sound and, uh, ran sound for bands and stuff all the time. Uh, and had a, had a little bit of equipment. Um, but I mean, whenever I first started, I was recording phone calls. Um, so I mean, like from then to now, like, being able to see the person on the other end of the conversation makes such a huge difference in terms of not only the tone of it, but just the flow of it. And the, um, you know, the, the casualness of it, like it's the conversational side of it instead of, you know, I I don't know about you, but I'm awkward on the telephone. I mean, I'm awkward in person too, but I'm really awkward on a telephone. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and, and then being able to see everybody, you can tell when somebody's, about to interject and put a point in you can see what somebody means by their facial expressions by their demeanor and it's so much better than uh you know 
doing it just via phone and, and you can't really tell and you may not get the most out of that interview, but you can get a lot more out of people if you can see their demeanor and, uh, you know, but on the flip side of it, listening and not watching doesn't bother me at all. Like I listen to podcasts and don't see the people on there very rarely. Honestly, do I ever watch a podcast on YouTube? That's just not how I, you know, how I consume that, uh, you know, that type of media, even though everybody now has the video to go along with the podcast, I usually only listen and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't bother me. But on the flip side, when you're the one that is hosting the podcast and you're able to talk to you, it's so much easier to be able to, to see them. And then, you know, I think the main reason people record it is the live aspect is, you know, a lot of times they're going to go live on Facebook and that's why they want to record it. I, I will do that occasionally on KBN or, um, you know, bass kayak and beers. If, if Armando's on and I see it's on, I may flip over there. But um, I don't know. It's kind of weird to think about that in reverse. Yeah, for sure. So, Jody, what has been like? What's been something that's really surprised you about starting this podcast journey, and what's been probably your biggest challenge to overcome? Uh, the challenge, I'm going to go ahead and start with that one. Uh, it, it's probably a two way tie. Uh, initially it was getting guests, which, which still is just because of work schedule. Uh, it, it's kind of hard trying to schedule when the way our schedules work. Sometimes we have night pours or we have to be in at midnight and then the next day it might be normal banker type hours. But, um, so planning that ahead and and trying to get it where the guest can can do the interviews on like a Friday evening or Saturday morning um, or sometime when I when I know in advance, uh, I'll probably be able to do it in the afternoon or early evening. Um, but uh, also uh, just being able to get the content released on time has been my biggest challenge because I'm bad about uh Wanting it to be as good as it can be. And I know I still got a long ways to go. I know there are a lot of errors with it. I know there is no such thing as perfection. So I'm just, you know, grasping for it, it straws. But um, just getting it w what I envision to be the best that I'm able to do at that given time and just being comfortable with getting it out there is probably the biggest challenge. But um, as far as the other, um and then what what was that that part again what's been the biggest surprise to you the surprise um i don't know it, it not I, i'm not been surprised by uh the cost of it um i, I knew there were going to be fees incurred um i knew i'd be able to find a lot of free options which is also part of what's taking me so long to get stuff up is finding the most uh budget friendly route but um probably just the outgoingness of of the guests that i have had on and just their willingness to to talk openly and uh you know, it's so far, it's everybody I've interviewed has, has been a uh, um, brother in Christ. And uh, uh, I asked Ott uh, before we started, I was like, now, is there anything that, you know, I probably need to not ask that might get you in trouble with sponsors that you can't answer because of any potential sponsors? He's like, nah, just ask me anything. It, it'll be all right. So I was, I was honestly, that was probably the, the biggest surprise was somebody with sponsors saying, yeah, you can ask me anything. I don't really care. Uh, so I'll, I'll answer it. It's all good. Awesome. Yeah. I, uh, I, I Defoe and, uh, Chris Wells. Um, I mean, they've been two of my favorite guests to, to talk to also. And they, they've been, two of the ones that have stood out so far, uh, for y'all. Um, and you got to, you know, uh, that's the great thing about, about these guys is, um, like even on two similar podcasts, like ours, like two completely different interviews because, you know, you oh, were yeah. talking about the OG series and, 
and everything with Ott and um and talked uh, about a lot of different things and then with with chris like you got to talk about his new podcast and everything that's another podcast y'all bass chaplain podcast if you uh if you want to listen to like just the the face stories of of pro anglers um you know i've had a i've had a bunch of them jody's had some but i mean he it, it's it's interesting listening to chris on his podcast because those are his buddies and like it's a completely different dynamic than than having somebody like as a guest and it's your first time ever talking to them and everything like these guys uh, you know they can say tell them about that time you that thing you done did over there at what you call it and they know exactly what you're talking about <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and that right. that's one of the things that uh, i try to do whenever i have a guest on is before I do the interview, I try to listen to as many other podcasts that they've been on so that I'm coming from a different angle, asking them questions that people haven't already heard the answers to. Absolutely. And I will say about your your thing about editing and like being a perfectionist, whenever I first started, I edited the absolute snot out of these episodes. Now... If it's there's just, a hum that bothers me, I'll get the hum out. But other than that, it like I might do some like some uh, like normalizing of levels to make sure that nobody's like way louder than somebody else. But that is it. Other than that, like the video gets zero edits before it comes from here to YouTube. It comes straight from here to YouTube. Yeah, the the episode that I'm actually getting ready to drop uh, that'll be coming out. Um, right after we're recording this, uh, but prior to, uh, this episode dropping for you guys, um, I was just going to release it as was, but my, uh, little recorder that my mic goes through into the computer, it, the batteries decided to die mid interview. So I had to do, do a little quick repair on that and get some fresh batteries and, uh, I cut that probably about three minutes of uh, dead silence, me looking around trying to figure out what's happening and then fixing it. But that's about the only thing I, I edited out. And it's after uh, editing, I've only done four interviews so far, but um, it's like, nah, I just don't have the time for this. It's <laughs> people yeah. are going to get what they get and they'll either watch it or they won't watch it. If you get sucked into that, it has to be perfect mentality. Like you can spend so much time on editing and everything. And and I did like for a long time, like now, like I spend a little bit of time on Tuesday night and it's all uploading. Like I don't, that's about it. But if you do need a free audio like editor, audacity is about as good as you can get. It's got, phenomenal list of of features and everything but um i mean if you're if you're on an apple um i mean you can use garage band but don't call it free uh because <laughs> there's a reason that apple's twice as much as everybody else um all right robert you look like you got a question uh no i was just gonna ask about um your new short segment that you started uh i think it's called think about it and, uh, you know, kind of what led up to that. I think that's a nice, uh, you know, on your – on. I, I believe you're doing it on your off weeks and, and every other week you're dropping a full episode and then on your, uh, on your week that you were off, you're having a kind of a quick shot in the arm. And tell us how that came about. And, uh, you know, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, so the concept behind Think About It is uh, when I was in the youth group in church – literally two decades ago now um my my wife's father was actually our sunday school teacher and uh, he would always end each lesson uh with with this phrase does anybody have any questions comments or pondering thoughts and that's just literally always stuck with me and uh he told us where it came from but i don't even remember now i guess i need to ask him but when I first decided to do the podcast, I knew I wanted to have uh, some 
spiritual aspect to to the show to every episode uh, if possible and originally the think about it segment was going to end each episode and it was going to be related somehow or other to the topic of that show uh, be it if it was like an oral essay that i was presenting on an outdoors topic or an interview with a guest uh, it would somehow all tie it in and leave the listener with something to think about that would fuel either spiritual growth or outdoors growth or somehow combine the two. Well, once I started recording and dropping the episodes, my goal is to keep the episodes at a, like right at the one hour mark or less. If an interview goes long, that's fine. Just break it up into two episodes uh, just because of attention and time, time constraints. Um, but what I decided to do because they were all hovering about that hour, even without that, and because of the segment that I end the shows with, which is very similar to the uh, the one that you end most of yours with, um, it, it's kind of going from a, a fun, very lighthearted, immediately flipping the switch to a very serious nature. Um, and what I decided to do was in order to have more content and give me something to do, because I enjoy writing um, when I have the time, uh, I, I wanted these to be devotionals and literally just a devotional that I would present on air. So I decided just to start doing those in my off weeks, do my main show, keep with every other week basis, because that way I'm not getting stressed out, having to come up with content for a full episode every week, but I've got something coming out every week. And um, I've always wanted to write some sort of a book. And as of now, what I'm looking at doing is at the end of each season, which for, for my show uh, runs uh, October through September. Well, once each season ends, I'm going to take the think about it, devotionals that i've produced over that season publish them into a book for that season basically have a collection that people can either download for free um or uh have printed copies that, that folks could buy to help support the show and the way i'm planning on doing that i've still got to look at all the details if i even end up doing it as far as selling them um any profits from those I'm going to turn around and have basically booklets with five of the devotionals in as giveaways. And anybody that orders something from the web store, once I start uh, having more items on there, throw one of the little devotional tracks in, go around to trade shows, have a backpack full of them, hand them out to different vendors, different folks. Um, and I'm actually asking all of my guests uh, who are, or, who are uh, followers also if they'd be willing to write a devotional to be included. And I've already got uh, several that, that have said that they're going to participate for this first collection and uh, which is, which is really good. And uh, then eventually over time, uh, once I have enough on a particular topic, just as an example, we'll go with fishing. Um, once I have enough devotionals that combine fishing with faith, then I might either do a 30 to 45 devotional collection of just fishing related, or maybe do one of the miniature ones, one of the booklets that's just five, five to seven devotionals that are fishing related as give outs. Or uh, say if I were to go to the East Tennessee Fishing Expo or Red Crest or the Bassmaster Classic. Um, and just have a, have a backpack of them to hand out that, that are targeting that particular audience. But that's that's the idea behind Think About It. Now, there will be some uh, that won't be completely serious, I'm sure. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's the concept. And uh, the hope is that all, or at least the vast majority, if not all, will be able to somehow combine creation or outdoor recreation with a spiritual concept to either help folks find God and start a relationship with Jesus or help them grow in their relationship if they're already a follower. Cool. That is awesome. Yeah, I mean, well, that's a, that's, that's a good 
point to segue into your faith journey and your faith story. Um, so what is it that you believe in and how did you get to, how did you come to believe that? Well, um, I was fortunate that, that I grew up in a, uh, family in a household, uh, of believers, uh, that, that were my, my parents are both strong Christians. Um, my dad, uh, was actually raised Catholic. Um, and then after, uh, he and my mother were married, um, he started, uh, going uh, to, uh, to church with her at a Southern Baptist church, which I've grown up in, in the Southern Baptist denomination. And, uh, Basically, the nutshell of what I believe is is all based on uh, that Scripture is 100 uh, God-breathed, that there's nothing, uh, there are no errors in it. Um, God used men as a tool to uh, write His words, um, and that any answers that we need as humans on this earth we can find in in scripture um we might not understand everything in in the bible i think there are some things in there that we don't necessarily need to understand but um like i said i grew up in in church uh i was saved when i was young i was i believe it was second grade um or when i when i gave my life to christ and then uh, actually at Camp McCall, uh, which is the, the Southern Baptist camp here in South Carolina for, for boys, for the Royal Ambassador Group, um, I actually rededicated my life there a few years later and uh, uh, pretty much spent my whole life in church um, and uh, actually met my wife in church. And uh, we, we started out uh, in the youth group together. Um, and then I left for a little while, came back home. I uh, started back going to the same church that we'd both grown up in. And uh, and then now we're actually at a different church now, but uh, we're there with our kids. And um, I, I believe that because of that, that there were some things that I wanted to do in life that uh, did not pan out for one reason or the other. And that that's just led me to believe that, if you've committed yourself over to Christ, he's going to put you where he wants you, whether you want to get there or not. And eventually you're going to end up where you're supposed to be. Absolutely. It's like that. Uh, it's like that, uh, that comic. Um, it kind of harps on the, uh, the footprints in the sand poem there for a minute. It's like, it's got like Jesus with his arm around this guy and he's pointing. He says, where you only see one set of footprints is where I carried you. And then he kind of like deadpans and, and points over the other way. He said, that long line is where I dragged you kicking and screaming. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Awesome. Well, um, yeah, you know, we've got a couple questions that we, we ask everybody. Um, and so we have not, we have not talked a ton of fishing yet. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of, uh, dive into fishing a little bit with this question. What fishing story or memory means the most to you? Um, <clears throat> probably just going to the pay ponds with my dad. Um, because like I said, we didn't fish a whole lot when I was a kid, but when we did, uh, there, there's one here, uh, in the area where we live called Red Barn. Uh, it's actually close to, it's actually a restaurant now. But uh, we'd go there. They have two ponds. We'd go there. And uh, that's where I learned a couple of phrases. Um, obviously, the one that we all teach our kids is you can't catch fish if you're talking just to get some solitude and some quiet. And then the other one was, well, if, if you're not catching anything, it's because you're not you ain't holding your mouth right. <laughs> but uh, no, I remember going there and we'd we'd always uh, anything we caught. We take home and and usually we'd have a we'd clean it and then mom would make a stew out of it. But uh, I remember this one time we went out there and I, I'm sure you have seen or at least heard of this being done. But the the tab off of a coke can being turned turned into a fish hook, 
I actually saw somebody do that, wrap the line around the can, cast it out and catch, catch catfish that way. I, I, since then, I still have never seen anybody actually catch anything by doing that. But, but this guy managed to pull it off and, and he had probably the biggest one around all of us. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I've seen it done, but I've never seen a fish caught on one. Um, but yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure I have TMJ now from trying to hold my mouth right. from being told that on my life. <laughs> <laughs> Only people from the South would even know, know what you're talking about. Like when I, I, my dad would say that all the time. Ah, oh, boy, you're not holding your mouth. Right. And it didn't matter. It could be fishing. It could be, it could be anything. And if, if you weren't getting the results you wanted, it was definitely because you were not holding your mouth. Right. Oh, yeah. um, if, it was, if it was easy for one person and it was hard for you, it's because you weren't holding your mouth right. Yeah, yep. that's it. Yep. That's it. And Jody, you mentioned earlier that two years ago, I think it was, that you caught your first largemouth. You got to ask, what'd you catch it on? It was actually, let me see. I'm looking to see if I still got it over there on the windowsill. Yeah, it's it was a uh, it was a mouse that I actually got from the Spro booth at the classic expo when it was held uh here in in greenville lake hartwell a couple years ago and, uh, so yeah we were just walking around the kids were collecting all this stuff that was being given away and we got home and i i, I immediately seized all of the actual tackle <laughs> and uh the next time i went out to to the pond i like to go to um i was like well they're hitting hitting a lot of a lot of bugs on top let me see what this one will do so i threw it out and i mean it wasn't big it wasn't anything to write home about but it, it was the first large mouth that i'd ever caught was it yeah. the uh was it the like metallic purple mouse no actually uh it, give me just one second i'll grab it and show it to you all right and four Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> well, yeah, well, it's even better. Like, uh, yeah, I uh, went ahead and seized all of the real tackle. It's like, exactly. it, you, know, right. you know, they, they didn't want to get the hooks in their hands and thinking there were toys and stuff. So that's awesome. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so no, it was, I don't know if, let me see if I can get the camera to focus on this. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, very natural color. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it's not wanting to focus on it. There we go. But yeah, so that was the one. Uh, that's cool. It's a good size, too. A lot of people throw the really big rats, but I like the little, the little ones like that. Yeah, so and then, uh, like I said, we uh, naturally we had to seize everything so that the, the kids wouldn't yeah. uh, be causing any unnecessary ER visits. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's that's one lure that I don't see or hear very much about like now. And it may be more prevalent than than what, you know, than my what I'm seeing and hearing. But growing up, uh, we threw a, a mouse a lot on uh, Kentucky Lake, Lake Barkley. And that was something that my dad always had tied on was a mouse. And uh, it was there. They were basically like the frogs are now with the tail, you know, just a hollow body, you know, just a little bit different shape than, than the frog. But, you know, who knows it, anything is skipping across the top of the water. And I think that that bass, if that bass is hungry, it's going to hit it. I don't think the bass stops to ask what it is. No. They, no. If they'll hit the Z man hell razor, it doesn't yeah. matter what they think it is. That thing looks like that's that crazy. Looks like you trying to run on top of the water, man. Yeah. So, uh, what about the you know uh, fishing or hunting? Or if you're in the outdoors, what's your what's your normal conversations, or what what may be a conversation you strike up with? Uh, it, it could be with your kids or somebody else that you're hunting or fishing with. Um. Well, normally I'm a little bit of a loner. Uh, and uh but usually if we're if we're out um i'll just, I'll just go with the kids as an example because we go to my sister-in-law's uh pond a good bit to take them fishing and uh 
I guess with them, it's it's about two things. It's about patience uh, because uh, I need it with with five of them <laughs> all throwing hooks at the same time, and uh, they, they get real frustrated really easily when, when they're not catching anything as quickly as they they feel they should because uh, they've got spoiled on that pond. I mean, there's absolutely no pressure on on the bluegills. You literally we we've caught them with nothing on a hook before that they would come up and bite the hook and uh but about like look if you get frustrated just put it down walk around go explore see what you can find see if you can find a turtle see if you can find a frog explore something else and then come back to it take a couple deep breaths forget about how mad you are right now that you're not catching anything and then come back and pick it up um are usually we'll, we'll try and with the kids we, we try to relate it back again to god um and and it being his creation and how it's our responsibility to uh take care of it um now depending on who you talk to uh, some people will go to the extreme with that to to the uh where uh you're forgoing um, human taking care of the humans and putting more priority on the animals, but uh, it, finding that happy balance as much as possible, anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I believe it is time, sir, to uh, to go into our uh, segment now, powered by Nakwa Adventure Gear. If you uh, if you were wondering, I don't know if we said it earlier, the power bank that Robert was holding up, and if you if you were listening and didn't get to see the logo on it, that was from Nakwa. Uh, he's holding it up again now. Uh, so that is the power bank with this uh, this uh, what's it called the stash pack on it. Uh, yeah. the, protective cover um that's the like the usb external charger they've got the they've got the batteries they've got lighting they've got all the connectors that you could ever need um i am really looking forward to uh to teaming up with them for that sonar pod mo- modification on the Moken. um but yeah let's uh let's get started on what's your favorite It's time for What's Your Favorite, powered by Nakwa Adventure Gear. Power that fits in the palm of your hand. And fun tidbit, if you are somebody who likes the little behind the scenes stuff, that piece of music right there is the first solo piece of music that I've ever recorded. Um, so that was that was me on the piano and me playing drums on the piano and playing my bass. Uh, um, I've recorded a lot of music on bass, but that's my first solo piece. So um, it, it had to be that length because I sped up so much in the uh, by the end of it that if I tried to loop it, it sounded like all of a sudden I hit the brakes and slowed way down. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's uh, let's get this started. Robert, you want to start us off, man? Uh, yeah, what's your favorite scripture? All right, favorite scripture is uh, probably Second Samuel uh, twenty three twenty, uh, where it's talking about Benaiah, uh, specifically uh, where he where he goes down into the pit on a snowy day intentionally to fight a lion. Oh, absolutely. All right, so this may end up being the same answer, but your favorite Bible story? Yeah, it's it's. Probably definitely the the story of Benai, even though it's only a few verses uh, in Scripture. Um, uh, but I, I'm going to say it's a tie between that and God describing to Job Behemoth and Leviathan. Um, you know these these two massive beings that He created, uh, and then like with Leviathan, that you know, man, you can't do anything with it. But I don't have any trouble killing him if I needed to, or taming him myself. Absolutely. Yeah, awesome. Well, what about, we'll switch it up and go a little bit of fishing. What's your favorite fish to catch? Uh, probably the Bartram's bass. Uh, I've only caught two, but uh, hand, hands down, Bartram's bass. Okay. Awesome. Now, I'm, um, 
I've studied fish since I was, you know, two years old. What is a Bartram's bass? Okay, so a Bartram's bass is actually native uh, here in upstate South Carolina. Uh, it is uh, uh, one of the red eye bass species, and uh, it's actually one of the four that the DNR uh, includes on their black bass slam challenge list. And uh, they're small; they don't get large. Uh, Twelve inches considered a trophy far. Okay. So, and uh, there you usually find them up in trout streams up in the mountains is, is the best place to find them. Okay. And Bartram's bass. Yeah, Bartram's bass. Okay. That's a... Add, add that to your uh, bucket list there. Yeah, for sure. That, that'll that put a nice, nice mark on the life list for sure. Oh, yeah. All right. So Bartram's bass is your favorite to catch. What's your favorite fish to fish for? Hmm. Probably the same. Uh, just, yeah, just, just because it's, I'm getting into fly fishing and, okay. and, uh, that's probably the easiest, best way, uh, I, I know of to, to target them. For sure. Um, so are they, are they pretty abundant in the, in a particular river system or is it like, how, oh. how, how big is their range and how, um, how common are they? I don't want to misspeak. Um, there, the ones I caught was in the uh, Chattooga River, and uh, I, I believe they're in the Chalga as well. Um, but they're the state record for red eye bass. Uh, they think is actually a hybrid with one because it's just way too big to be a Bartram's uh, because they average about an inch per year of life. And they very rarely get over that 12 inch mark. But, uh, I mean, I was fortunate. I, I took a class that DNR hosted last summer, uh, where they taught you how to target them about the Bartram specifically, as well as the other red eye bass species that are mostly in Alabama. But, um, which that caused me to add several more uh future trips to my bucket list um but uh i mean they're all gorgeous fish and uh but but with them crossing and and then other species being introduced they're they're kind of getting pushed out and then with water issues with water quality um and then even with the trout uh because rainbow and brown trout being introduced uh, since they're not native here just the brook trout uh, being the only one native to the area, um, it, it's the habitat loss and, and all, but they're fairly easy to catch. And there's actually um, the Chattooga River Fly Shop. Uh, they actually offer guides specifically for the Bartram's bass, which is pretty cool. Absolutely. Heck yeah. And what about uh, favorite fish to eat? Uh, that one's going to be catfish. So. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. How do you like your catfish cook? Uh, I'll eat it fried, but if, if I really had the choice, it, it'd be in a stew. Good catfish stew. There you go. I don't think we've had a stew yet uh, <laughs> on that on that question. So that's what I'm talking about. I do like a good fish stew, and catfish is a good fish for fish stew. Oh, yeah. For sure. <laughs> It, it, you were never, I, I don't think now, and from everybody I've ever met from Middle Tennessee, I have never heard of anybody put a fish in a stew. We fry everything. It does not matter. And the first choice is frying. The only reason you wouldn't fry something is because you ran out of breading and you didn't want to go to the store. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> now I will say I'm being from Eastern North Carolina. Yeah. We will fry absolutely anything that you give us, but we will also turn around and put that same thing in a stew. And we are not afraid to turn around and put all of it in the same stew. We, <laughs> like uh, you just want to call it seafood stew and have fish and shrimp and <laughs> everything in it. I, that's fine with us. <laughs> See, and it's we're in perfect stew weather right now. Anyway, Absolutely. you know, being in the teens and low twenties this week. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, man. So, uh, 
now that I'm craving fish stew, what's your favorite fish and snack? Okay. Uh, this one, and I always have to explain what this is, but stand up weenies. You know what stand up weenies are? I yeah, do. Vain and sausage. All right. There you go. Yeah. See, yeah. I have to explain it to people from here. And you have to know what it is. <laughs> uh, I know exactly what it is, but I'm not going to eat one. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's we, we, that. It is not for me. Yeah, yeah. Well, we always had that. And that is one thing that was always on the boat was vein of sausages and uh, usually a pack of crackers. And yep. that's, yeah, that was a staple. We, uh, I mean, to me, vein of sausages are bait. That's catfish bait. You take in and you uh, you run your bait needle through it and pull the treble hook through and tie it. <laughs> And everything. And that's that's only if you run out of the chicken livers. <laughs> um, but I I will say one of my my dad and I one of our favorite fishing fishing things was watching the the bill dance um, bloopers, and uh, he always had the blooper specials. And one of them was you know whenever you uh, you open the vein of sausages, the first thing you do is you drain them out. He opened a vein of sausages and poured them out in the lake and, and tried, to yeah. get, tried to get them off the water. Uh, let's see. What do we got? Uh, favorite body of water to fish? Mm. That one's actually um, a little small, small pond uh, here uh, near where I live uh, called Boyd's Mill Pond. And, uh, it's, they have a limit on the motor size that you can have in it and which I'll usually go out in the kayak or, or the canoe. But, uh, if you don't have a mud motor most of the year and you're not getting too far from the, the boat launch anyway. So, cause I actually got stuck last year and I haven't been back since, but I took my boy out in the John boat and we, we got stuck and I had to. Like I ended up measuring it once we got back, but I actually had to get out and pull the boat for about probably a quarter mile because it was so Ooh. shallow. All right. So a couple questions. First, whenever you say mill pond, uh, does that, I don't know in South Carolina, does that mean the same thing as it does in North Carolina where that's typically like a cypress swamp? No, it's, it's just the name of it. Um, and I haven't looked the history into it, but I, it almost makes me wonder if there used to be an old mill there. Oh, I'm and, sure there was. Yeah, and uh, but the the dam on it actually, I think I've heard some rumors that they're getting ready to drain it so that they can do some work on the dam. But uh, I was actually talking to a guy at work the other day, and he said uh, he doesn't typically go in the pond itself. He usually goes down the river, and uh, he's caught his largest bass there. And I'm, I'm on probably be kicking myself for saying this on, on here, but, um, I have heard that it's been said by some of the DNR scientists that have gone out there to do the, the electrolysis studies that they fully expect the next state record for largemouth in South Carolina to come out of Boyd's mill. Wow. So big, but, big like, statement. Yeah, but I mean, you you've got to have a canoe or a kayak really to access it. Awesome. Hmm. Yeah, um, I I cut my teeth in on a mill pond called Tulls Mill Pond in Deep Run, North Carolina, uh, in terms of kayak fishing. Okay. And, uh, and so it had been destroyed by Floyd. Hurricane Floyd came through, blew the dam up, and they had. He got some state help to rebuild the dam and it had, it had been filled back up like not that long whenever I started fishing it. And it was, you know, it very much a, a cypress swamp and had um, a, abundance of species and everything. There were some big bass in there, but they were few and far between. And then Hurricane Matthew came through and absolutely destroyed it. So Tolls Mill Pond doesn't exist anymore. Hmm. It looked like somebody threw a hand grenade into the into the dam, and it he he was told he couldn't get any more help to rebuild it, so he had to close hmm. it up. But that I wanted to ask, what kind of kayak are you fishing out of? Uh, right now it's just one of those Walmart specials uh, that uh, I actually I was talking to my uncle one time about getting one, and he said, well. 
I don't use mine anymore because of my shoulder. Uh, I'll just bring it to you the next time I'm down. You can just have it, save you some money. So I said, oh, okay. I'm, that's I'm the not best guy. Free kayak. Yeah, that's the best guy. Absolutely. Well, am I up? I am yeah. up. All right. Um, what is your favorite lure to throw? Um, I'm going to say right now with, with getting into the fly fishing uh, is, is probably the Sam's one bug. Um, just because that's what I caught the Bartrams on because I tied it myself. And um, just uh, having so many jump at it that I missed the sets on. But, uh, yeah, prob- probably the, the Sam's one bug right now. Okay. Now, I am but a humble conventional fisherman. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> explain to me what a uh, Sam one bug is. All right. So, the Sam's one bug uh, was developed by a guy named Sam, Sam Blevin a while back. And uh, if you can hear his son, Wade Blevins, tell the story, it, it's an amazing story uh, behind it. And uh, hopefully I will we'll be able to work out having him on my show at some point to tell it. But you can listen to uh, – he's been on several other podcasts uh, telling it. But basically it, it's a foam body, um, and uh, it, it sits on the water. And the way I fished it was uh, I, I just uh, cast it out and just let it do a dead drift. And they um, – the way I understand it, it it's uh, – a lot of folks believe that it's the legs, just the two let or the four legs on it on the water is what is the big giveaway for, for that particular bug. But it, it's pretty much just uh, some marabou on the back, uh, the, uh, the foam body, a little bit of gorilla glue and a hook. Um, and, uh, like I said, I've only tied it once or twice, but, um, and that was a year ago, but it's, I mean, it's very, it's a very simple, basic lure, but it gets the job done. Absolutely. Yeah. Something special about catching a fish on like tricking a fish into biting something that you made. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And what about your favorite time of year? What's your favorite time of year to fish? Um, probably autumn um it's just my favorite time of the year in general but just being out on the water and getting so distracted by the leaves changing and and the temperature is just spot on perfect usually uh even here in upstate south carolina when you know one day it might be 30 and the next day it's 80 but uh yeah definitely autumn cool. we are we are probably upwards of 90 episodes in and have had you know, have asked that question probably 70 times and I don't, I don't know, probably, let's say, let's say probably 40 of them would probably say, say fall, but I don't, out of those 40, I don't know that I've ever heard anybody on this podcast say autumn. <laughs> 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 now you have so there you go <laughs> that is awesome uh, all right I, this way my, my wife claims that i'm an intellectual and <laughs> uh and, and i have a bad habit of watching a bunch of old british sitcoms so that's probably where that comes from i like it awesome well we are going to start wrapping things up man uh go ahead and let us know what do you have coming up next for you and for field quiver outdoors uh, well uh Coming up next is uh, just some more interviews. I've got a couple more uh, lined up. Uh, I've got one great one uh, that actually by the time this episode drops would have just come out. But uh, I'm working on the first quest, which is what I'm calling them, that will be released on the website uh, with explanations through one of the episodes. But basically what that's going to be is it's going to involve, think of it like earning a merit badge for Boy Scouts. But uh, something you can do at home w- on your own or with your kids, uh, but it's going to involve learning and actually uh, participating in some sort of an outdoor activity uh, to increase your knowledge and outdoor skill sets. Uh, but it's also going to have a memory verse that's applicable as well for you to learn. Um, that first one's going to be coming out hopefully uh, by uh, early March. 
and uh you just get some more stuff dropped on the website for sale uh actually turn it into a business since that's what it was supposed to have been from the get-go uh but yeah just just keep it rolling and uh just just keep uh using it as a witnessing tool with the podcast and the youtube channel absolutely and what about you know social media and website um you've mentioned the website a couple of times you know plug that tell us where to find you tell us how to listen to the podcast all that good stuff uh just kind of tell, tell us where we can we can get a hold of you yeah so the website is fieldquiveroutdoors.com and uh you can go there uh, I've got links about the gospel fly, um, information about it, um, which actually, I, I guess I should have mentioned that in the, the last question, but that's actually, I'm working, uh, about to start working, uh, with a guy that I just interviewed, uh, who's also an artist to come up with a modernized version, uh, of the gospel fly, which is a witnessing tool, uh, that is basically, the uh the wordless book or the little beaded witness bracelets uh those colors incorporated into a fishing fly and um so uh i've done a full episode on the history of that folks can listen to uh the podcast they can listen to on pretty much any pod podcast uh streaming service um if there's one that uh, folks use that the show's not on, uh, they can send me an email, uh, Jody at field quiver outdoors.com. Let me know. And I'll try and figure out how to get it added on to that, that source. Um, but, uh, YouTube, uh, is field quiver outdoors. Now there is another channel that is very similar in name to mine, but because they have so much more content, uh, even though I don't think they've posted anything in a few years, um mine's a little bit harder to find but they can they can go to the website and and link through there to get to the youtube channel and then social media i have twitter i don't really use it that much but instagram and facebook are the two main ones and uh then the and then both of those just you can just look up uh at field quivers outdoors awesome and I wanted to give you an open floor to, you know, shout out sponsors, supporters, anybody you wanted to say thank you. The floor is yours. Yeah, so I don't have any sponsors for the show. Uh, haven't really pursued that at this point. Uh, if something falls in my lap, we'll, we'll see. Um, but as of now, it's just been an out-of-pocket thing, which is why I'm trying so hard to get more stuff up on the website for sale uh, to kind of help offset the out-of-pocket cost. Um but uh, at this point, just big shout out just to the folks that have allowed me to interview them for the show. Um, and I know you guys, I'm going to have you guys on there and pick y'all's brain here before too much longer. Um, uh, it, and uh, But there's a guy in California named Rocky Bemis. He's the one that actually uh, developed the gospel fly, came up with the design and, and all. Um and I was actually trying to find this uh, particular fly because I had seen it about a year prior online, trying to get it, one of these lapel pins for my son for his birthday present last year. Sent him an email, stumbled across his old website, sent him an email. And uh, nutshell of the conversation, he didn't know the website was still active. And uh, I told him what I was doing with Field Quiver, what, what the goal of it was. Um and I uh, just asked him if, if he minded if I kind of used uh, the the gospel flies design a little bit, maybe tweaked it some, modernized it. Um, and uh, it, basically what he said was, no, look, you I've been praying for this for a while for somebody that, that wants to use it for for the witnessing purposes to share the gospel. Um, you do whatever you feel is appropriate with it. And I'm just going to send you everything that I've currently got. So uh, I, I've got um, a bunch of lapel pins that, that I'm selling on the website. Um, and I've come up with uh, some trading cards uh, that are effectively tracks. Uh, they have the gospel fly, gospel fly on the front. And then on the back, they have um, what each color represents with a scripture reference and uh, a little QR code that folks can scan to go to the website to learn how to become a Christian. Um, but... 
anybody that's wanting to support the show, the, the main thing I asked for with the show in terms of support is prayer. But if, if anybody wants to support it financially, I'm not going to turn them down. They can go to fieldquiveroutdoors.com, buy some of the stickers, um, buy from some of the gospel, gospel fly stuff. Um, or they can even just make a donation there on, on the website that'll go into uh, the, uh, if it's a donation, it'll go strictly to the podcast or being able to give away these gospel fly uh, tracks or stickers. Awesome. Well, Jody, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Um, this has been another great one. Uh, 2024 is starting out on a, on an awesome, awesome foot. And uh, I look forward to uh, getting a chance to, to come on, come on your show sometime and, and uh, enjoying being on the other side of the mic. Heck yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I appreciate y'all having me on. Yes, sir. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Well, Robert, that was another fantastic episode. Um, and I, what were your thoughts, man? Yeah, it's always good to have. Uh, you know, we always love having other podcasters on. It, it, they're easy to talk to. They keep the conversation going. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, his his take on things uh, and, and what he's doing is it's pretty awesome. I listen to some of his shows and, you know, I, I – I think he speaks well, his voice is good and, and he carries on a good conversation. And, um, I've enjoyed the podcast on, on, uh, you know, the ones that he's put out that I've listened to, um, really good. So uh, I think that was a good, good third episode for the season. So you're right. We're on a roll. Absolutely. Um, and I, I wanted to end it on a, on a note that, uh, was uh, just kind of throwing it back to the end of last season. Um, you know, Today I was having a, a little bit of a of a day. <laughs> Work was crazy. Came home, it was crazy. I was I was doing dishes, and normally I try to do dishes after uh, after Henry goes to sleep. But I was I was like I there, there's just a lot of dishes, and I don't want to I don't want Caitlin to end up having to do all these dishes that I I made a mess uh, fixing dinner and um, was starting to get the 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 grumbles uh, a little bit and I, I thought back to whenever we had alex on talking about positivity and and you know just just finding the positivity and i uh, and i was I stopped and i was listening to my wife play with my son and listening to to her go overboard and him giggling and everything and i was like and my mood immediately changed from um i've got I, I've got all this mess to clean up. I've had such a long day. I'm I'm done with this. To she is such an awesome mother. That is such yeah. an awesome kid. And immediately, you know, my my whole mood changed because it went from went from finding the negativity to finding the positivity. So, just wanted to to kind of share that little little tidbit from from my life of, you know, just that putting that putting that episode into practice. Yeah, it is good. We all have to stop every once in a while and really look around and, you know, be thankful for the positive things that are in our life. And a lot of times you just have to stop and look around and take yourself out of the, you know, the everyday things that we have to do and the the crazy schedules that we all put ourselves into going from one thing to the next and uh, to stop and just take in some small moments like that can make all the difference in the world. Absolutely. Well, Robert, you want to close this out in prayer, man? Sure, man. Dear Lord in heaven, thank you for this day. Uh, thank you for allowing us to have Jody on to share, um, share his testimony and share his faith journey and uh, his journey with Field Quiver. Uh, please watch over that and uh, bless his show and, and all the things that he's doing. Uh, give him the, the strength to... Uh, be consistent in that and, and uh, give the listeners, his listeners and, and our listeners the strength to reach out and, and to tell them what a difference that his show is making. Uh, that's always good to hear and, and keeps people going. And uh, watch over us uh, in this uh, new year that we start out in 2024 
and uh, let everybody have safe travels and um, just put your hand on on anybody that you see that needs your help and uh, forgive us of our sins. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, man. You want to close us out? Yeah, man. Hey, I want to touch one more thing before we close it out. I listened to the Tackle Talk podcast today. I don't know if you've listened to that yet. I think it just came out yesterday, maybe, or today. But it's the Berkeley episode where they all went to Houston. Have you listened to it? I'm about You're halfway shaking your through. Head. Yes. I'm okay. about halfway through. For everybody that's listening, if you love fishing, you got to listen to that podcast. He talks a lot about fish behavior. I won't spoil the rest of it for Cam, but it is one of the best fish behavior and um, scientific knowledge sharing 30 minute podcast that you will listen to. So you guys check that out. You know, Andrew Hayes does a great job on what he's doing. Um, and this is a great episode and I'm sure there's other, there's, I know for a fact, I've saw other content creators post that they were there. I'm sure they're going to be coming out with some videos and stuff. And it sounds like, uh, Berkeley did a really good job of, of putting that on and, and having a bunch of folks down in Houston, Texas and, uh, sharing what some of their scientists have been up to. So you guys have a great week and we'll see you next week. Take care. Thank you for listening to the Faith and Fishing Podcast. Please consider supporting those that support us. Jade's Jigs Lead Free Finesse Tackle. Use promo code FNF10 at jadesjigs.com for 10% off. Save your outdoors. Stop losing your gear. Use promo code FNFP15. Saveyouroutdoors.com for 15% off. Omnia Fishing. Check out Premium, Premium Pro, and their Ambassador Program. Use promo code FNF10 for 10% off at omniafishing.com. And if it's your first order, use promo code FNF15 for 15% instead. Mr. B. Lure Company. High quality handmade baits made right here in the U.S. MrBLureCompany.com. Use promo code FAITHANDFISHINGPOD for 15% off your first purchase. Get outdoors, pedal, and pet. Check them out at the shop in Greensboro, North Carolina, or at shopgetoutdoors.com for all your paddling and cycling needs. And Nakwa Adventure Gear, lighting, power, and all the connectors at nakwa.com. Please rate, review, subscribe on whatever app you're listening on. That's going to do it for this episode. Y'all take care and God bless.